Hello, Gene the OK Boomer here. Welcome to today's vlog. One of the most distressing aspects of this presidential administration, the Biden administration, is how dependent he has made us on other countries. The obvious example, of course, is for oil. We were energy independent for the first time in who knows how long under Trump. Look how quickly in only a few short months Biden has turned that around to the point that we are now begging Saudi Arabia to distribute more oil, to provide more oil, to make up for what we were providing for ourselves, a deliberate policy of the Biden administration. I'm not going to go into detail on, on, in that today, except to cite that as the obvious example. Another one I would cite is rare earth minerals, which we must get from China. Not Even Saudi Arabia is not what I would call a steadfast friend. I think they're a friend of opportunity. I think they, if the occasion arose, they would abandon us for, well, who knows, Russia, China, uh, maybe even Iran under the right circumstances. But definitely China is no friend to the United States. I, I really get disgusted every time Biden refers to China as a competitor. They're not a competitor. They want to displace the United States as the world's greatest superpower, or at the very least to become a co-superpower with uh, the United States, which at least today, as I'm recording this, the day before you're seeing it, is still the world's sole superpower. But our liberal friends, uh, and Biden is totally a captive of the far left of his party. Let's not deny that. He uh, obviously doesn't see it that way, or the people he depends on to uh, support his administration, they don't see it that way. They don't like us being a, a superpower. They want us just to be one nation among many. The point being, though, we have uh, rare earth minerals in the United States. We just have to drill for them, mine them, excuse me, mine for them. We had uh, potential uh, Afghanistan is, is just it's full of rare earth minerals. Now China, it looks like they would have access to those minerals. Now, admittedly, it's hard to get at those because of the geography of Afghanistan, but the potential was there. We were there, and just as fracking was not possible several decades ago and then was possible but not economically feasible, and now fracking, that was one of the, the factors that made us energy independent. So those are a couple of examples right there. But there's another one even more distressing than these first two that I mentioned. And this is something that doesn't get talked about enough. But Iran, Iran and Iran's quest for a nuclear weapon, though, I don't believe the Biden administration. I don't Biden is a weak president. I don't believe him when or any Democratic president, to be honest, uh, he or, or former President Obama. Maybe if it's not something I, I would want to happen, but if there were a president, Manchin, Joe Manchin, him I would take seriously. But uh, this all options on the table. I, I just don't think that all options are on the table. I think we or this administration would let Iran get a nuclear weapon. Don't listen to what I say. Watch what I do. So we have to depend on another country to prevent us from being under the threat of an Iranian nuke. Because you have to remember, they don't need uh, a lot of uh, nuclear weapons. You can look up uh, EMP, electromagnetic pulse, which is simply to set off one nuclear weapon high in the atmosphere, and it would, it would fry the electric circuits of the, our whole electrical grid for at least a large part of the, the country, and then without electricity, immediately send us back to the, um, the uh, 19th century, number one. Number two, I hope we have, well, maybe even generators wouldn't work uh, to keep our, our military Powered. So you see the danger. Fortunately, we have a country that we can depend on, and fortunately, they're an ally, and that is Israel. So I want to give you this headline Israeli Air Force getting ready to attack Iran. 
prevent nuclear strike. After a two-year hiatus, the Israeli Air Force is once again practicing for a possible strike on nuclear facilities in Iran, according to Hebrew media reports. An unsourced Channel 12 report, Channel 12 is, is a, an Israeli TV station, said that IDF, that's uh, Israel Defense Force, uh, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi ordered that funds for exercises simulating strikes on Iranian facilities be set aside and directed the Air Force to train, quote, intensely, unquote. The IAF, that would be Israeli Air Force, is the only Air Force that has ever struck nuclear facilities. The IAF destroyed Iraq's Osirak reactor thwarting dictator Saddam Hussein's nuclear ambitions. And in 2007, the IAF destroyed Syria's Al-Kibar facility, which was being developed with assistance from Iran, uh, Iran and North Korea. The important point, the important phrase here, is that uh, uh, IDF, uh, Chief of Staff, uh, directed the Air Force to train quote, intensely, unquote. And that's what I don't see happening here. I don't see any, never mind training intensely. I don't see, or I don't have, unless they're keeping it very secret, I don't, and, and again, they, why would they want to keep a secret? The details they would want to keep secret, but they would certainly, I would think, want Iran to know that we are rehearsing and preparing and planning for an attack on Iran on their nuclear program should it become necessary. I've seen no indications of that at all. I don't think this administration is doing anything anything physical, anything military to prevent Iran from getting a, a, a nuke. Uh, the best we could hope for in the United States is something would happen that would require an action right away, and then Biden would order some kind of a, a, an attack quickly without any, not taking the advantage of what we have now, time, months and months and months to rehearse and plan an attack. If you want to know how uh, potentially the bad, the lack of planning could be, you could just look at Afghanistan. That's the obvious recent example where Biden just ordered a, a pullout and nothing was planned and he just set a certain date for a, a photo op and, and that was uh, that was uh, planning in their minds, and we see how that turned out. So, as I said, it's very distressing, but at least it's fortunate that we're going to have to depend on Israel, and uh, it looks like they'll st step up to the plate because for Israel, it's an ex existential threat. Number one, Iran is closer to Israel. Number two, they've got. Hamas on their southern border. They've got Hezbollah on their uh, northern border. So it, it, it and Israel, the whole country is about the size of New Jersey, and the whole population I think now is about 10 million, something like that. But a, one bomb could do an incredible uh, amount of damage. It would be an existential threat to. To Israel. So I, I am sure they are not going to let Iran get a, a bomb. But then talking about lack of us taking any action, it would be very simple just to give them a couple, give Israel some bunker busters, give them the weapons to do the job themselves. That's one thing I criticize Trump for is that's what he should have done. He should, because this whole JCPOA, he could say, okay, well, we'll, that's what he should do. And maybe if I were Trump, I would have said, okay, we will sign this agreement. And then after signing the agreement, say, okay, well, Israel over here did not sign the agreement. They are not party to this agreement. So we are going to give Israel all the uh, weaponry they need to destroy Iran's nuclear program. All the weaponry, all the materiel, all the, the, the planes, bombs, anything they need, whatever they need, and a green light to uh, use them, any or all of these weapons, anytime, and no need to get to even inform the United States. Just keep it secret and do it. And then I would tell the uh, Iran, okay, we're sticking to this agreement. You better stick to it too. And then we will 
uh, if you keep the agreement, we, we will. But if you break the agreement because of uh, fear from Israel, well, that breaks the agreement. And then we will work with the Israelis and you'll get, you will risk an attack by both of us. And just to make sure that would stick, I would start planning and rehearsing a joint attack. The United States and Israel from two directions on Iran's nuclear program and say, okay, we... We're rehearsing. We're ready to go any time. It could happen if you uh, if you consider if you continue to pursue a nuclear weapon, then you definitely will get an attack from the Israelis, and they have all the weaponry they need to take out your nuke program. And if you do anything that violates the JCPOA, then you will risk uh, an attack from both of our countries. But right now, we're not party to the J The JCPOA doesn't even exist anymore for all practical purposes. So I would start rehearsing with the Israelis right away. Give them all the weapons they need to do the job themselves and rehearse a joint attack and just make sure that the Iranians know that if they continue to pursue a nuclear weapon, they they will be attacked. Make it an absolute certainty. And I, as I said, Iran, they probably would not uh, take seriously any threat from this weak president that we have, but definitely they would take, uh, they better take seriously a threat from the Israelis, uh, definitely from Netanyahu if he were in power, but also uh, the current Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, he is as he disagrees. Uh, no love lost between Bennett and Netanyahu in, in all other aspects, probably, but definitely when it comes to defending Israel's very existence and the willingness to attack Iran, they are very much on the same page. And that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. As always, I appreciate the time you spend with me. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions for future topics, you can put them in the comments section below the video. You could subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. Share this video with anybody you think would also like it. And most of all, uh, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.